Hi, I'm Dan Kling with the Link Electric Welding School. Today we're going to go over some troubleshooting of flux cord self-shielded welds. We're going to look at some of the different variables and how they affect the outcome of your weld and what we need to look at to help improve that. The first variable we're going to look at is wire feed speed. Wire feed speed is, is directly related to the current. So the higher the wire feed speed, the higher the welding current, the lower the wire feed speed, the lower the current. So we've got our welding machine set for what would be considered a too low of a wire feed speed. And you're going to notice the, the transfer of the droplets is going to be more of a globular type transfer and we're not going to get complete coverage of the slagging system on top of the weld and a lot of spatter. So we're going to go ahead and make a weld and show you what it looks like when you've got too low of wire feed speed. You'll notice, first of all, it's very hard to get the, what little slag that's on there off. And we do have a lot of spatter. And remember we said that wire feed speed is also the current. So low on wire feed speed, we have a very low current here as well. So not much penetration into the base metal and a narrow type bead. Okay, the next uh, variable that we're going to look at for troubleshooting our flux cord self-shielded welds is too high of wire feed speed. Again, we mentioned wire feed speed is going to be, uh, is going to be our current. And what's going to happen when we have too high a wire feed speed is you're going to notice the wire wants to keep stubbing. So with that, you can either do one of two things. You either turn your wire feed speed down or you turn your voltage up to correct that. So this weld we're going to make now is an example of too high of wire feed speed. So you could hear that stubbing of the wire. Now obviously that was an exaggerated uh, high wire feed speed, but that's something that you'll commonly see. It could be to that level, or it might not be that, that, uh, you know, that easily uh, seen. Now we're going to look at the effects of travel speed. So what happens when you go too slow or when you go too fast? The first weld we're going to make is at too slow of a travel speed. Now we've set our machine for the factory recommended settings, which is located under the door and we're going to be set at a wire feed speed of two and a half and a voltage setting of D and we're going to, all we're going to do is change our uh, travel speed. First one again being too slow. So we made our weld with too slow of a travel speed and if we look we can, we can tell we've got a real uh, build up weld or a convex weld and it's also uh, very wide. And you also notice too the slag didn't quite cover uh, properly on the weld as well. The next weld we're going to make is now we're going to go too fast. We're going to increase the travel speed. Again we have not changed our machine settings, all we're going to do is go faster than what's recommended for this particular weld. You also notice that I'm breaking the wire every time before I start. That's a recommended practice for the self-shielded flux cord wires. It'll get a little ball of uh, silicon on the end and it'll insulate it and it won't allow you to start very well. So we'll just feed on a little bit and break it off and we'll get a better start. So we just finished our flux cord weld that is ran too fast and you can really see a difference between the first one we made which was too slow of a travel speed and then the second one that we made where we actually we've, we've completely outran the puddle. We didn't get the follow or the uh, proper bead size that we want so we just need to slow down our travel speed uh, to get the proper size weld. 
The next uh, variable we're going to look at for flux cord self shielded uh, troubleshooting would be the contact tip to work distance. That's very important for flux cord self shielded wires. For this particular wire that we're running, which is 035 NR211MP, the suggested contact tip to work distance is a half inch to five eighths, which we've got here. But I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you have too short of a contact tip to work distance and too long. So the first weld that I'm going to make is going to be too short of a contact tip to work distance. And you'll see uh, several different things, but one of them will be that we don't get the proper uh, the uh, preheating of the flux inside the wire and we won't get adequate coverage of that. So we just made our weld with too short of a contact tip to work distance. And like I said, you'll notice that the slag had not covered the entire weld. It didn't have time to preheat. And you'll notice right down the middle, it looks real dark. That's because the slag was only on the edge of the weld. So very important variable in a flux cord uh, arc welding, self-shielded. Now we're going to show you too long of a contact tip to work distance. So again, recommended is a half inch to five eighths. We're going to take it over five eighths and we're going to look and see what happens. And again, we're going to notice a little bit of stubbing of the weld and it's not going to be wetting out very well. Now this weld, you'll notice that it, uh, it sounded a little different. That was because with that longer uh, contact tip to work distance, you could see the wire was kind of hunting or, or going back and forth. So we weren't getting uh, very consistent feeding. And you can almost tell that by the way that it made those uh, little ripples in the weld there uh, with just even a straight drag progression. You could see how the wire was kind of hesitating every once in a while. So make sure to maintain that half inch to five eighths. One important thing, another important thing is polarity. Polarity is very important for flux cord arc welding, self-shielded. The recommended polarity for this wire that we're running, 035 NR211MP, is DC negative. A common mistake is that it is, it is often ran on positive, and a lot of times you don't realize what's going on. So I'm going to demonstrate a weld on the wrong polarity, which we're going to run it on DC positive, and notice the difference in the arc. So we just ran that weld on the wrong polarity. We ran it on DC positive. And if you notice, we got a lot of spatter and large balls of spatter. And we got a fairly small weld as well. So we definitely want to make sure that we make sure that we're on the correct polarity before we make the weld. So I just made a weld. You saw what happened when I welded with the flux cord self shielded on the wrong polarity. Remember, the recommended polarity is DC negative or straight polarity. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and set up the machine for the correct polarity. And we can reference up here, it, it says for inner shield FCAW NR211MP, it shows a diagram of the machine setup and the positive and the negative terminals. So for DC electrode negative, it's going to be the lead that's coming from the feeder is going to be put onto negative. And then our work will actually be positive. 
So we'll change these around. So that is set up for DC electrode negative. Our wire from our feeder is hooked to our negative output stud and our work lead is hooked to our positive stud. Now, one of the last things we talk about in troubleshooting our welds for flux cord cell shield of wire are gonna be our angles. Now, one of the rules that we talk about, and we talked about it with stick welding, is if there's slag, you drag. So in the self-shielded flux cord process, there is a slagging system. So we wanna make sure that we drag the electrode and that allows the slag to form behind the weld and it's lighter than the molten puddle and it'll float to the top. So if we push it, a lot of times you'll take the chance of getting slag inclusions in your weld. So make sure, slag, we drag. Now recommended angles. We've got several different angles that, we, that you commonly refer to. Uh, one of them is going to be our work angle. Work angle, for this particular joint, we could be 90 degrees. But on a, on a lap joint or a T joint, you want to be about 45 degrees to the joint and just a slight drag, maybe 5 to 10 degrees, with this self-shielded flux cord wire. So very important that we maintain those, those angles. So we've got a work angle and we've got travel angle. So now that we've covered uh, some common areas of troubleshooting for flux cord cell shielded welds, we covered our uh, uh, contact tip to work distance, we covered our travel speed, our wire feed speed, and now we're gonna put those all together for proper weld, and we're gonna try to make a, a, a weld with the correct settings and just uh, drag it down the joint. Now, we just finished our, our weld with the proper settings, the proper uh, uh, contact tip to work distance, travel speed, wire feed speed, and voltage. And if you look, we now have a consistent weld that's, that's fairly uniform, it's flat, but you also notice that our slag coverage is very consistent across our whole weld. If you remember before, some of our variables, if we were without, within tolerance or without, uh, out of tolerance, it would not cover the whole weld. So now we can take the slag and it will come off very easily and we get a nice shiny looking weld. So if you want more information about welding, you can go to lincolnelectric.com.